Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions, my name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out Continuity by developer Ragtime Games. This is a puzzle platform that's going to have players essentially sliding around tiles inside of a sliding puzzle to create a linear path to grab a key and find our way to the door. It sounds super simple, but it gets super complex and it's uh, surprisingly both very complex clever and accessible all at the same time, which is, I think, the exact kind of fusion that we look for here on Indie Impressions. So let's check out the credits very briefly before we start things up. There you go. And I'm going to go to Restart Game. I've actually played about 15 minutes or so of this to get acclimated. I got, I think, about halfway through it already, but I think the puzzles are going to get exponentially harder uh, as we get further in. So here is our basic conundrum. We've got right here, well, essentially only one puzzle piece. Uh, normally there would be four, but then eventually goes up to six, possibly eight and beyond. I'm not sure quite how far it goes. Uh, but for now, all we need to do is press spacebar to engage with whatever tile the uh, player character happens to be within. And then we go ahead and grab the key, move to the door, and solve level one. So this is 31 levels remains a total of 32 levels. Fair enough. So now we're introduced to the concept of having multiple rooms. Uh, this is really about as easy as things get, aside from the first one, and all we need to do is just line up these edges to make sure that we have uh, a possible passage from one side to the other. Now, if these things did not line up uh, with the black parts of the tile being flush on both sides, we would get a little eh -eh and not be able to go through to that tile. So that's essentially what makes this such a clever game. There's going to be a lot of situations, scenarios, uh, where we need to think very creatively on how we're going to create a passage for our character to go through from point A to point B. And a lot of times it will require a little bit of backtracking and things like that, so that you're going to have to learn to think in new ways, which is kind of the hallmark of what I think makes a game rather clever. Uh, now, beyond a simple art aesthetic, honestly, it's it's not the most graphically flourished or beautiful game, but, you know, it gets the job done. It's rather simplistic, and it doesn't come across as overwrought or pretentious or anything like that. Uh, what really, I think, does shine, though, is the music, uh, which is rather sedated while you're in your thinking mode here doing your ranging, and then gets a little bit more intense when you get into the actual platforming moments. Uh, so what we need to do here is, as you can see, the key and the door happen to be both on the same side. Uh, what possibilities do we have? Well, we can slide this over, land our character down below so we're in a new tile, uh, then essentially reorient all of this stuff so we can then fall to another tile. And as you can see, that L-shaped one is now going to allow us to put this next to that, walk through, grab the key, go to the door, and call it a day on that level, so... Uh, not difficult at the beginning, but things definitely ramp up a little bit, and this is where it's going to start to teach us about how we need to find uh, similar-looking edges, otherwise we're not going to be allowed passage like I mentioned earlier. In this case, a simple set of stairs, nothing too complex here. Uh, we'll just reorient so now the key is in line, and we should be able to essentially just cross this whole uh, gap all the way through to the other side where the door is. You can see the top little tetramino thing, the T-shaped block is now uh, our kind of our guideline to be able to find out where things are going to line up. All right, so first things first, we happen to be in a room with the key, first of all, so why don't we just grab that? Uh, you would think, well, if you weren't thinking very hard, actually, you would think that you could maybe just walk through there. Not the case. That would be a little too simple. So we've got to look at what we've got to work with and what kind of platforms and floors and things we happen to have. Um, it might actually be that this is a surprisingly easier one than I think, yeah, it is. We only just need to reorient that and just hop right through. Uh, one of the minor criticisms I would have for this game is that it seems like the difficulty curve is a little bit uneven. Uh, I've reached a couple of levels that seem like they were very difficult, and then right afterward, uh, the game introduced maybe a new element, like having a couple more tiles, in fact, and then all of a sudden things got very, very easy again. Uh, for a puzzle or two, and then they ramp back up again. So it's a little bit stop and start sometimes, which is not the worst thing in the world. It's just kind of a, an observation that I made. I prefer generally a, a reasonably linear, uh, if anything, exponential difficulty curve, but that's just my own personal preference, and I'm not really saying that the game is bad for it or anything like that. In fact, quite the opposite. I think this is a very enjoyable game in just about every respect. I mean, it actually even has some uh, congregate achievements if you're into collecting those, so you get little bits of you know, reinforcement for your time spent, and uh, I find it's just a relaxing way to wind down if you want to do a little bit of puzzling that doesn't come across as too crazily difficult or hard to parse. This is just sort of a, a new way of thinking, and re relatively positive in just about every way you could come up with. 
So uh, here we go, we've got a big gap on the right side of the screen. I'm gonna put us next to that, and then we should be able to hopefully parlay that into being able to carry our player up to here. Sort of like a little bit of the same sort of thinking you might have to do if you're playing Portal, in fact. Uh, you have to sort of compartmentalize uh, 2D and, well, in Portal, 3D space uh, in a way that somehow allows you to be able to see passage through things that wouldn't normally make any sense. So in this case, again, not too difficult. Uh, that was level 7 completed. I'm going to do a couple more here so we can see what it starts to get like uh, when things get a little trickier. So now we need to start looking at what edges are going to match up, first of all. Uh, this is really the only one that's going to make any sense for us in this first setup here. So we're going to take this, go back to the other side, and then notice we've got one that sort of splits into two halves. Uh, really not too big of a deal here. Let's just slide this on through here. Maybe not halves is quite right, but you know what I mean. Splits into two parts. Uh, then we should be able to look at sort of like a converter. Uh, where things line up, and then that's going to take us from the two parts to one large part, and then that, as you can see, lines up with the final door. And I'm kind of over-explaining things, but it is kind of worth overstating, at least at the beginning, uh, because you need to provide yourself with your own hints most of the time, but I believe there is actually like a walkthrough as well, if you need to, built right into the game. I think you can even skip some levels if you get particularly frustrated with one of them. Um, I would say, though, probably stick with it. And now you'll see we've gone back to four tiles, I guess, so we've sort of jumped back a little bit downward in terms of difficulty. Maybe they designed this uh, with skipping levels in mind a little bit. So we're gonna sort of see that we've got one of those again, a passage that lets us grab the key and then jump down, and then that's gonna split us into two parts. And then all of a sudden it looks like we've already solved this level. That actually seems like one of those cases where difficulty seems to be going backward. So yeah, level nine, very, very easy. But now we've got something that looks a little bit more complex. And I think this was the first one that took me a moment to uh, parse how exactly I'm supposed to solve this. But it's totally rewarding when you happen to figure it out. Uh, so you would think in this case, maybe I could drop down, but as you'll notice, uh, these don't actually line up perfectly. If I was to drop through here, I would actually fall to my death, which is how they're able to create some platforming moments later on. Uh, so not a big deal, we'll just sort of regroup and then see what we do have in terms of options. Uh, places that have one way through are really only just the one up at the top here, the top middle. So we'll orient that over, fall down here, and then we'll sort of re-examine what our options are, taking this one step at a time. Now I was next to what seemed to be one of the only obvious ones, uh, although, if you just take another step further, you might have gotten yourself a bit muddled going into that dead end and found that maybe that was a bit of a red herring, perhaps? I'm not 100% sure if that's totally true, but I think this is probably more the correct way to go. As you can see, our final goal, we've got a two block and then a one block at the top, so we need to find a way that that connects. Uh, so looking at this situation here, what can I link up to on this one? That's gonna be a one, don't want that, but I do need something that's gonna connect, so I'm looking for some sort of a, an adapter again. Well, this looks like it's gonna sort of give and get the same thing. That's actually where we started anyway. So maybe I was wrong, and the other time it was actually the red herring was that I did the thing I actually did, unfortunately. Um, okay. Why don't we... Oh, you know what we can do? We can go to the right now. No, we can't. That does not line up. Never mind. Got a little ahead of myself. So we'll come, we'll come down here, um, see where this connects. Could this just feed back into itself forever? I guess it could, couldn't it? Alright, fair enough, so we'll not do that then. Um, oh, wait a minute. Here's what we want to do. Maybe we want to get over to the right and then go over one more up. Oh, right, again, I just made that same mistake. I'm real dumb. Sorry. Let's try this one more time, not making that same mistake. Go through here, wait in the cubby hole, and as you can see, even though I've already solved this once, uh, I'm already flustering and perplexing myself again, so the challenges do get a little bit more elaborate. Um, how do I break out of this little maze here? It seems like I'm kind of stuck in a loop right now. Ah, here we are. Okay, I think I see the solution now. So I need to follow this to the right, and then the one below me, I need to line up uh, with the one that I'm in right now. So let's move that over there, 
that's going to allow me access to a two-pronged uh, manner of approach, and then that is hopefully what's going to get me to our exit. Uh, so now I should be able to get through to the bottom half of this, which is the area I wasn't able to quite reach before. And then I just need to reorient... How do I reorient? Got myself confused again. Ah, there we go. So now I use the same tile to loop back around. And now I can get to the right side of this chamber. And that's what's going to get me to the final screen. See, this seemed like a drastically harder puzzle compared to all the other ones so far, didn't it? Alright, so that's actually our solution then. And pardon the fact that it was rather convoluted. I did not know what I was doing, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, so now we've got a much, much less complex situation. Uh, this one is actually laid out in a way that's, you know, almost simplistic based on what we were just doing a second ago. Uh, so we've got a... Basically a line that we can trace from one side to the next, and I believe what happens to be another red herring, the block that I'm standing in right now is not really quite right. So there's not a whole lot we can do with that. So let's re-examine and reorient. And I think what we want to do here is just get one of these guys in. And we can actually disregard about half of the blocks. So if I was to fall here, this would just be a reset. And then we'll just take our exit and put it right there. Wouldn't this be very interesting to see if you could actually get, like, six iPads and line them all up next to each other and then just, like, move them all around? Anyway, uh, this is what happens to be, I think, one of the most exciting and confusing puzzles that I'd run into so far, and I think this is uh, the last one I finished before I went back and wanted to go ahead and make the video. I won't solve this for you because, honestly, it's really rewarding when you figure it out. Uh, but I think things are only going to get better and better as you go. So I definitely want to recommend to you guys, go check Continuity out. It is free on Congregate. I'm going to have a link for you so you can play it right in your browser. Uh, there is, I believe, an iPhone or iOS version of this as well, uh, Continuity 2, in fact, which probably in involves new and crazy things. I like this version perfectly just the way it is, uh, but I haven't even seen any other ones, so I probably shouldn't be commenting on it yet. Uh, all in all, thumbs up. Really enjoyed it the whole way through. Great music, great approach, very clever puzzles. Uh, interesting logic behind them, and, and in general, just a, a fun premise that I could see uh, being expanded even further out. I'm not like a massive fan of sliding puzzles either or anything, it just happens to be a fun way to dress up uh, what would normally be a fairly standard platformer and forces you to think in very interesting ways. So last time, description, check out continuity, check out my other social media links too while you're there if you like. You can see my Twitter, follow me on there if you choose. Uh, Facebook page, of course, where I've got every day's new videos going up over uh, on that, as well as indie-impressions.com, which is my website where every episode gets aggregated and sorted and tagged and classified so you can find stuff more easily. Uh, you can even do searches over there, too. So if you're ever wondering, uh, did Nick play this game? And then you type it up in the search box, and you can find it out very easily if I have. Uh, so with that, I will leave you for another day. Please do leave your support and your comments. Of course, I'd love to hear from you regarding continuity, uh, what your experiences were with the game. Did you find it enjoyable? Was there any particular puzzle that got you horribly stumped or anything like that? And please do come back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day without fail. So I will see you back for that, and I hope you have a lovely night. Talk to you later.